Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews and today we are discussing Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis. I honestly don't even really know how to give you a synopsis for this one. Um, I'll try. Adam Driver plays the mad genius Caesar with delusions of grandeur and ideas of a perfect city called Megalopolis of which he wants to build using a fictional obscure item called Megalon. And there is a sort of political debate about whether that's the right thing to do or not. Sort of. Now Francis Ford Coppola is a director I have a lot of time and respect for. He's very driven, he sticks to his guns, he knows what he wants to create and somehow he does get there through hell or high water. When you look at things like Hearts of Darkness and the absolute disaster that was the making of Apocalypse Now and then look at the end product of Apocalypse Now, you can't help but respect the guy as a filmmaker. He clearly has a lot of class and talent and patience and willing to get such a masterpiece out of the ground from absolute hell. The Godfather 1 and 2 are two of the greatest movies ever made. Coppola could quite literally fling shit on a canvas and I would still give it the time of day simply for the repertoire of work that he's built upon. And Megalopolis is his dream project. I believe he's been trying to make this ever since the end of Apocalypse Now. He sold one of his wineries to finance it. Studio backing is just not here. It is entirely off his own back and own wallet. He wanted full control. He did not want money men coming in telling him what he can't do. And finally, we are here with the finished product of a movie that cost well over 120 million pounds. Was it worth it? Well, I will start with the positives and they may be few and brief. I must admit, as much as I've seen many early reviews and letterbox reviews that absolutely hate this, trash it, think it's toilet water, complete pig shit, I can't say I disagree but I do think I like it a little bit more than you. And I think my enjoyment of the film is that I do at least appreciate the fact that it is ambitious. I like the fact that it's different. It's not generic, that's for sure. It's out there, it's bold, it's really trying to do something on a really mega epic scale like no other film before. And I think I mostly enjoyed just seeing somebody have a bloody go. This is your dream project. You have built up a career that allows you to put yourself in the position to do this. Have at. Let's see what you got. And for that, I did take a very, very, very small portion of enjoyment from this film. There are moments that are absolutely stunning and breathtaking. The moment that you see in the trailer with the hand coming out of the cloud and snatching the moon. I thought that was wonderful. And there are many of moment like that, but they are just moments. I like the set design, I like the cinematography, I do find the world intriguing. I do think it could have gone way deeper with it and been way more interesting, but I like the small taste that they give you. I did like the sound design at times, those very small subtle details of clocks ticking very faintly in the background. I thought it was very subtly placed in there, but that unfortunately is it when it comes to the praise. It's all just airy-fairy, very light, very flimsy. I can appreciate the intention, but that's it. Because the execution on the other hand, Christ above, this is a mess. And it didn't take long for me to realize it was going to be a mess. I would probably say 15 minutes in, I started to see cracks already. A big one that caught me off guard straight away was the extras. If you start watching the actors in the background, God, they're bad. They're really distracting. I don't know how Ford Coppola did not see that and say, guys, can you just actually act like normal, real human beings actually would? Because I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but it's weird. They're doing that weird overacting thing. You know, the whole piss, 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 piss. Gosh, ah, oh, pointing, he, 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 he. It's no, no one acts like that. It's so jarring and I couldn't help but stare at them every time they were there. They were consistently bad. Performances are quite bad here, to be honest with you. I'm a big fan of Adam Driver, but this is very bad. This is not a good performance from Adam Driver. In fact, there is a scene in the movie that I wasn't the only one. Several people laughed. He has to show a moment of anguish and it's so stupid and cheesy. He's holding his face and just going, no, no. Yeah. Mm. What are they doing? I just, I don't know. There are so many moments like that in this film where I'm just left scratching my head and thinking, that's the best take. Really? If anybody does give a good performance here, it's actually Aubrey Plaza and I'm not her biggest fan, but somehow she was the most entertaining and enjoyable character here, at least in my book. Shia LaBeouf, I, I want to like the guy, 
but I just can't. <laughs> it's a very weird performance that he offers here. It feels like he's doing a rendition of the Joker. I don't really know why. He comes across very comic booky and cartoonish. He's, he's actually irritating in this film. It's paced so poorly. It stops, it starts, it's chaptered. It has these placards of Roman biblical quotes and textures that feel deep, but they're not really because they don't go anywhere. They're just being slapped in your face out of nowhere and then just moving on into something else entirely. It keeps on trying to tie its ideas into the Holy Roman Empire. And again, it, it just comes across really pretentious. There really isn't anything there to actually grab onto and go, oh, you're you're making some sense here. You're, you're saying something quite deep and profound here. No, it, it's just spitting out ideas that aren't cohesive, that aren't coherent, they're just ideas. It is spitballing. What if this? What if that? Well, the Holy Roman Empire had this, and we are now 5,000 years past that, and who gives a shit? It all feels so airy, fairy. There's no depth to it. It's not fleshed out enough for it to make any actual logical sense. We're just doing things, because... Looks cool, sounds cool, I guess. And I think what hurts the film most is that there does seem to be a good film in there, desperately trying to get out. And it may have come out had Coppola actually had some money men above him saying, cut that, get rid of that, don't need that, that doesn't lead to anything, fix that up, point that in a direction where it actually lands somewhere. It's his own egotistical nature where he has just made a film for himself. And on some level, I do agree with that. I do think you should make films that you want to watch. But don't be so arrogant and egotistical to think that what you're going to come up with is going to be perfect. You should absolutely double check with somebody, someone outside of your bubble who can take a look at it with a clean perspective and go, hmm, yeah, problems. Of which Megalopolis has many. It's dull, it's dry, it's pretentious, it's frankly pointless. Half of the dialogue is just utter bullshit. It's stuffy, it's meaningless, and even worse, it actually has the gall to pretend it does mean something when it clearly fucking doesn't. Unfortunately, Megalopolis just boils down to being one of the prettiest, most pretentious and audacious, monotonous slogs that I've ever had to get through in a cinema. I really wanted to like this. I did. I really, really tried, and I do still think I like it more than some other people out there and I, I'm not saying they're wrong I, I, I've read their reviews I've, I've listened to them I actually think a lot of what they say is right Mark Commode despised this and I don't even disagree with him to be honest with you everything he says is right I just don't hate it to the same extremity I can't recommend it to you I don't think you should pay to watch it I don't think you should encourage this sort of madcap egotistical bullshit from filmmakers, even if you love them. If you really, really need to see this and want to check it out despite the poor reception it's receiving, my personal advice would be to wait until it's free to watch at home. Or of course, you could always team up with Davy Jones and sail across the seas, if you know what I mean, because it just isn't worth the time, the energy, the commitment, the money. I, I do feel like I've wasted my time. That's nearly three and a half hours of my day yesterday that I'm not gonna get back. I'm gonna give Megalopolis a four out of 10. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Megalopolis? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of this crazy ginger, we well, can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in an IMO wormhole. But if not, take care. And I look forward to seeing you on the next review.